Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the weekend update. Before we get started, a couple of things I wanted to throw out there. We are eight days away from an election that could see some crazy action near term. And, you know, going over charts and everything, as we have been for the last three weeks, I would still maintain this is a neutral stance market. And if I ever saw neutral charts, it's this week when I was getting ready for today's video. Neutral stance, and what I mean by that is anything can happen. Everything is set up to drop big, go up big, or flatline, which means we just play whatever action there is every day and we continue to keep our swings on the small side until after the election who knows what's going to happen in the next few days the things that could drive the market before the election are of course the same thing they've been using to trade the market over the last month a stimulus deal which seems very unlikely but you'd never know you could be way up on a short position and a deal could come and you get kicked in the head likewise for those of you long you could be up on on a nice long position no deal thing comes out and they pull the rug out so looking at the dow 15 minute chart again we're just in a sideways pattern if we look at the daily chart same thing here on the daily chart we could sell off a thousand points here up into the election uh, depending on again what the news is that's coming and, and the reason i say that is you see these circles here on stochastics this is a momentum change indicator that we use i've got a video that i went over how we use this but you can see here back um in june when we were starting to break down below the 50 level that told us that we were about to have a steep sell-off but then when we came to august when we came right back down it dipped just below the 50 level and then ended up rocketing higher next up we came to early september where it broke down when it got to that 50 level on stochastics and that was that big sell-off we saw back in september and now we are at a similar spot on stochastics so what is going to happen are we going to sell off down here a thousand plus points are we going to rally up to new highs that's why i have the neutral stance there's just no way of telling right now for most traders sitting on your hands until after the election is the best thing if we look at the QQQ, this is the NASDAQ, the big tech giants. It's holding up above the 50-day moving average, and RSI has flatlined. So stochastics here could bode well for the Dow if we are able to see an uptick again. But again, like everything else, just a neutral stance right now. Looking at the VIX, the thing about the VIX and the reason I'm bringing it up, all that matters is if this closes above the 200-day moving average. The 200-day moving average is at 31. So it keeps bumping up and coming right back down below that level. If we saw a close over 31, I mean, we're in a downtrend here right now on it, but a close over 31, that would probably signify some really near-term downside risk on the market. But anyway, let's jump into some stock plays. I and UV. Okay, I mentioned it. Next so ADMP here, we're looking at ADMP's chart. The COVID stocks have just been so out of flavor, it blows my mind. We just hit a record for numbers of cases here this weekend, but the COVID stocks are just, you know, sleeping, doing absolutely nothing. At least on ADMP after that slow ride up, it's now done a slow ride down and it's trending right here to the 50-day moving average. Let's see if it holds up. My favorite by far COVID Biotech is ARPO, loaded with cash, partnered with big biotechs. You can see here, it's just really in a tight range waiting for that big news, that big data release where all of a sudden everyone will go, oh, these guys are legit. Oh, these guys have a large cash balance and they start chasing it over too. Again, waiting game on these stocks. All right. INUV. Um I've said everything I needed to say about INUV in the chat room on Friday. You guys know it's a favorite of mine. We've started to see some very nice action on this one. The next level we're looking for on this one will be a close over 45 cents. This is not a one day play. This is not a one month play. This is a going out a few months play. And like I said on Friday, this is my top play as of now, I mean, it's a little early in the year. I usually don't call these till later in the year, another month or so. But I'm looking at this being my top penny play for 2021. Last year, 
it was this one and UAVS. UAVS ended up running 800%. This one ran 500% in June, but I believe this is a woefully undervalued play based on what they do and their growth rate for their AI advertising, especially with the connected TV angle. So chart is still in a back and forth angle. It, this is a patience play guy. Don't be expecting to get a Lamborghini on this one in a week. It could take six months on this one. Patience play. AYRO. As I mentioned, we picked this up as a new swing last week. Now a blue wave, if one comes in eight days, is really going to light up this alternative energy sector. I think this sector is going to be lit up no matter who wins, but it'll especially get turbocharged on a blue wave because they're likely to throw a lot of uh, rebate stimulus at this sector next year. This is a woefully undervalued electric stock, in my opinion. I said the same thing back in June before we got that huge run. I like this one here. Now, you see here, 50-day moving average is at $3. That is also this breakout line here. Push and close over three would be very bullish on this stock. The scanners and chasers will start to come in here on a break at 350. Again, we've got some significant upside on this chart right now. It's just a matter of sitting and waiting. Same sector, PIC, woefully undervalued. Now, this is one of those special acquisition things like Nikolai, like DraftKings, like Space. Now, Nikolai... The supposed fraud, et cetera, around NKLA has really kicked this sector in the nuts over the last month or so. We've got a $10 redemption value on this one. Aside from that, just look at this chart. Does this chart not make you want to buy? This is a sweet bottomed chart. RSI is starting to uptick. MACD is slowly trending higher while the stock was going lower. This is indicative of a bottom forming and a big pop up near term. We've also got stochastics deep oversold here. Excellent looking chart with minimal risk reward. I mean, what by that I mean, you place your stops at 10. Simple as that. Uh, you're risking 25 cents to possibly make two to $4. Excellent trading risk on this swing. Got to mention Tesla, of course. Tesla, monster earnings this past week. So of course, the stock dropped, you know, not uncommon, but it did dip underneath the 50 day moving average. The last couple of times it's gone down here in the last quarter, we've seen a significant rebound in the week following. So if we follow that pattern, we should see 440 to 460 early this week. And that should of course help this uh, EV sector. ENG, we are in a waiting mode here for the Whatever algo goes out there and blows up these $1 area small stocks, we're hoping they finally find their way to this one. Last week on Friday, it was OEG that they blew up. This guy is way better than OEG, but it's just a matter of when they come for it. A couple of low float, uh, non-sector related plays, IMAC. Uh, looking for $1.23 on this one. We had a nice move up last week. They will start to chase this one at a buck. You have the research in the chat room. Just look in the alerts room. But uh, excellent looking chart here. Perfect low float setup. This could be another one of these. I mean, if they pop out a nice press release next week, this is a kind of stock with a chart like this. If it gets enough interest and the algos get hooked, you're looking at 2 bucks on it. XBio. Same note on this one. This is another swing we picked up this week. Low float biotech play. We've got a lot of moving average resistance here, but a break over $1 and we're looking at 25 to 40% potential upside. Trading just above the lows in a nice uptrend here. Low float, the big volume comes, the algos come. This is one that could do very, very well in the near term. Last one I'm gonna mention today is MSN. Another extremely low flow play retail play you can see here we're getting a nice uptrend but again the reason on this one tiny float and a dollar 58 cash per share simple as that this stock has a dollar 50 cash per share the market cap is a buck you could essentially come in if you're loaded buy all the shares in this stock close the doors and walk away with a 50 percent return love these kinds of setups it's just a matter of getting that massive massive volume move where will they come in now 
I'm thinking we get a break over 110 and they're really going to come after this one. It'd be nice if they were able to pop out a press release, but we just need one of those algos. I mean, they've been running all these stocks left and right. And as I've been saying in the room, we're playing these small, but we're shotgunning it. We've got some iMac. We've got some XBio. We've got some ENG. And we now have, you know, some MSN. We're just waiting. They're going after these one by one. This one has all the ingredients for them to come after it next. Short video this week. Like I said, neutral stance, guys. This market, you know, we're getting really close to the election. Neutral stance. There's been a lot of action intraday, every day. We're just going to play whatever the flavor is. We've got some small swings. We're high cash. You know, it's only going to be another week or so before we get a clear picture of what, you know, the next year is going to be. The next year, no matter who wins, is going to be balls to the wall. There's going to be so much stimulus coming, especially if there's a blue wave. But even after the election, I could see things changing on the other side as well. Fed's out there propping things up. We're just waiting for more Washington stimulus. So going to be an interesting uh, couple of weeks, to, to say the least. But enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I will see you all in the chat room on Monday. Bye.